Okay, let's do it. Hi, Floss Shoe. This is Lori, and welcome to Once Upon a Stitch. Today is Saturday, October 2nd, 2021. It's fall. It's fall, you all. Welcome to my channel. I'm so happy you come back and visit with me every two weeks or so. Um, and I'm always glad when you make comments and we can have a little conversation. So thank you so much. I'm going to get right into it. Lots going on. Uh, lots to show you. So let's get to it. Okay, since we've last been together, we celebrated Caleb's second birthday at Michael and Rebecca's and he had a great time. He had some little friends over to play with. So it's always nice to see him interact with other children since during the week he just has his grandparents. So that's always nice to see. Then um, after 27 years, we're taking down our swimming pool. It was an above ground swimming pool. It was 27 feet round. And um, yeah, it's bittersweet. Um, a lot, you know, a lot of work is involved in taking care of a pool, whether it be above ground or in ground. And um, it's getting to the point where it wasn't getting used as much as we would have liked for all the work that we put into it. And plus, you know, the chemicals to keep it clean and sanitized and everything else. So after 27 years, we're at the point where if we don't take it down, it will probably rust out one day and we'd have all this gallons and gallons of water, maybe in our backyard and maybe into our basement. Who knows how it would have, uh, that would have happened. But um, so we're in the process of doing that. We took the liner out and there's a lot of sand in it. And it was a pool that I don't know what the proper word for it, but like it went down in the middle so that it, like on the edges it was four feet, but in the center it was like up to here on me, which is not quite five feet, but yeah, it went down. So, and there was sand in it, so we had to like re-put the sand, move the sand around and stuff. And now yesterday we got a truckload of six cubic yards of dirt to start filling in the, the hole so that we can have some kind of level property in the back. Sal believes that we might need like three truckloads. So we got our first one. We're going to see how far that goes. And um, he went out and bought another wheelbarrow. So yesterday I was filling wheelbarrows and he was basically going back and forth. Um, the new one is a lot lighter than our old one. Um, and it's smaller too. So occasionally I'd make the, the trips back and forth. I was usually filling them up. Um, and he would get mad at me like, oh, you're back, you're back. Because I do have um, issues with my back at times. Well, most of the time <laughs> but I just can't see him doing it all by himself and James has a really bad shoulder and Michael you know has things to do around his house so we just do the best we take it do it a little bit at a time so today we'll be doing more and tomorrow we'll be doing more as well so okay um, we also pulled out all our zinnias uh, they uh, it, I'm, I'm sure everybody who watches me watches Priscilla and Chelsea because who doesn't watch Stitching with the Housewives? And um, Priscilla always talks about her zinnias. So this year I planted zinnias in three places. Um, one was in a bed near the back of the house and they got like a misty white stuff on their leaves. Then I planted it in a section, I don't know, in another section and they grew really well, but they got really tall. They were like five feet tall. And then we had um, the pansies in front of them, but when the real bad rain comes, they kind of like all push down and then I have to kind of try to stand them up with some kind of brace. Um, so I wouldn't put them there again. And then the third place we put in by our side fence, a white picket fence, and they looked real pretty there until like the rains fall and push them forward again. But um, I did pretty well with the zinnias, um, but they got really tall and I, I don't know if, you know, like I didn't keep the packages just because they were two different brands. And I I think I would, wouldn't buy giant ones again. I think I bought one package that said giant. And so, okay. What else? Um, in my last video, I shared with you that I bought these little um, magnets to hold my fabric, but they were way too small. I ordered the wrong size. So a lovely viewer um, sent me a comment that said, you know, she emailed me and said, send me your address, I'll send you long magnets. But I didn't know what she was referring to when she just said long magnets. So I 
gave her my address. I thought it was something maybe she made and, you know, I can share on my channel and, you know, help her out or something. <laughs> but then when the bag came, um, she bought, sent me long ones of these. So definitely, definitely I will be using these, um, especially like on my long dog, which has a lot of fabric and his eyes of the sparrow and roll it up and stick it together. These actually, these magnets are a lot stronger than these. These are, this is nothing compared to this. So Brenda, thank you so much. Um, a thank you card is in the mail to you. And uh, thank you. I really appreciate these. And I will be using them almost on every project because if you saw my last video, you know I have a lot of big projects. <laughs> and thank you for all your kind comments. Um, and it was so nice to hear people say that um, they enjoyed seeing all those Brenda Keys, um, the sampler company samplers. And a lot of you had said you were going to go out and purchase them. And um, I have some some new ones of hers on order and I have um, some other ones. I, I can't wait for them to come in so I can share them with you. Okay, one other thing as far as updates and then I'll get into my finishes. Um, tomorrow where I am going to a farmer's market up in Summit, New Jersey. I've never been to it, but my daughter-in-law always speaks about it, my daughter-in-law, Rebecca. So she and I and Caleb will be venturing out tomorrow morning and um, I'll let you know how that goes in the next video. I'm looking forward to it. She always spoke very highly of that one. We were gonna go today, but um, we thought about it too late and Caleb's napping and by the time he wakes up, there wasn't enough time. Cause you know, uh, farmer's markets, they shut shut down usually around 12, one o'clock. So, so we're heading out tomorrow morning to a different one. Okay, um, I just want to share this previous finish um, that I had. And this was Satsuma Street, and I believe it was called Halloween Cat. Um, I stitched this, and because my do other daughter-in-law, Amy, loves purple, I gifted this to them. But what happened was when she took it out, we were there last Sunday, and um, she was starting to take out her Halloween things to put around the house. This came out, but the fab piece of fabric that I glued to the back, um, It looks weird that something is covering this and I'm not sure what that is. Oh, it might be the, yeah. Let me just raise it a tad. It's the little clip that comes on the shade of the um, shade on the window. <laughs> so anyway, um, it, it was coming off. So I says, oh, let me bring it home and we glue it for you. And what happened was I had used Eileen's spray glue, but it's not a permanent bond, which I found out. And I always wondered about that. So hers came off and I re-glue it with Aileen's tacky glue this time. And I um, can't see any you know, glue marks or anything. That's just the fabric itself. So I really like this one and I gave it away, <laughs> but they're enjoying it. So that's great. Okay, I had some fully finishes this time. Um, I think I shared that I finished this in my last video, but it wasn't fully finished. This is St. Lucy's Light by The Little Stitcher. And it was one of the 12 ornaments selected for the Just Cross Stitch magazine Facebook page of Stitch One a Month. And this was the October, no, September. September. This was the September pillow. And I did a little finish like this. And this here, this fabric here, it's wool. And I, I would say about five years ago was the last quilt show that I went to. And I can't think of the name of it. If it comes to me, I'll put it in the show notes. Oh, Mancuso. Mancuso Quilt. And I think they're out of Pennsylvania. And they come to New Jersey and they put on a quilt show. And they have vendors there. And there was a wool vendor. And she had this bag of scraps and basically it was the ends of all the wool like the selvage end so I think it was five dollars for the bag so I bought it and um, I found this little piece in there so I thought it would look good around this as a little pillow instead of an ornament so that was one finish then this is the October just cross stitch selection and it's by the knotted tree Need needle art and it's called a snowy little gift 
I guess the snowman is holding <clears throat> a gift with a ribbon on it. When I was stitching this, I thought it was a mug of hot cocoa and that was the steam. <laughs> but then when I read the title of it, I'm like, oh, it's a gift. I get it. And I just finished it with the same fabric. And I, op I cut it open in the back, stuffed it, and then glued a uh, fabric over it. And I just put a little ribbon. And this is wire ribbon. So I had to put a little bit of fray check on the ends because um, they were, it was unraveling. So I cut it and put fray check on it. That should be fine. Then I had showed you this as a previous finish, but I FFO'd it. And that is from My Favorite Things by Sue Hillis. And that's hers right there. And that's mine. Then um, a viewer, Danielle, sent me this one. It's um, Ben Creek and it's called Turkey. And I, and I realized when I was taking my Halloween fall stuff out, I didn't have too much. So I have my Halloween stuff downstairs right now and I have my fall basically up here. And uh, this right here says the witch is in. I usually, I used to hang it in my kitchen. And, um, but now I have a, a needlework project there. <laughs> so, um, so I got this one and I finished it. I just started it this month and I finished it and I put it on this pumpkin. Now, I wanted to share this with you. I purchased this pumpkin and it basically was like this without the magnet from Walmart. And when I was finishing, like when I was putting the um, stitch fabric on sticky board, I happened to rub it against that. And some of the orange came off on this, but it happened to be on a section that was behind and it didn't show on the front. So I got a tissue and I rubbed it on the pumpkin and the paint was coming off. So I either had to repaint it with something that wouldn't wipe off or what I found was, and I'm trying to remember where I bought this. I think, it was, I, think I got it at Joann's and it's called Deco Art and it's called Dura Clear and I got a matte finish. So this is it. I'm hiding my nails because I've been working in the dirt and I'm, <laughs> even though I scrub them, you never know. Um, okay, so anyway, I I bought this and here, let me show you the brushes. And I also bought these brushes at, um, it says to use a flat brush. So I bought these brushes at Joann's as well. And this says it cleans with uh, soap and water says not to shake it too much because you'll get bubbles. So anyway, I, I applied one coat on this. I put it on front and back. Um, you can't really tell because I put a matte finish on it. So this little finish now goes right here on this pumpkin. And this is a piece of aqua food. Obviously it's not a washer. It's, uh, I forget what it's called. I will put it in the show notes, just having a brain freeze. If it comes to me during the video, I'll yell it out. <laughs> and you're probably all yelling it to me because I always tell you what I use, but I just can't come right now. So anyway, um, and then these are four buttons that I had in my stash. So I like that finish. I can't wait to put it back up on the shelf. Um, okay, then I fully finished this. This was a blackbird. I forgot to look it up, uh, the pattern. It's from one of the books. I think it was the sewing book. And I finished it this year, and then I finally finished it. And I wanted to put a shirred seam binding, which, like, this is seam binding, but I wanted to do it in green. This is the back of the pillow. And I uh, left the bottom open and then stitched up the bottom. And I would love to have gotten like a, one of these greens here to go around. And I didn't have it. I have brown but or beige. But there's really no beige in it. This is like gold, but I didn't, wouldn't want to do that. So if I, right now I'm leaving it as it is. If I find the green, I will add it. And I bought this at um, 
two years ago at Needlefest, my LNS puts out um, a one day, it's called Needlefest, and basically you buy tickets and you attend. It's an all day thing. They serve you breakfast, lunch, and desserts and coffee all day and beverages all day and you sit in a big room and then they have uh, raffles um, and you get to meet a lot of stitchers this year i didn't go it was right before actually it was right after um, amy amy had the baby early my granddaughter and i i was originally planning on going but then it was around what the due date so i canceled and then also because of COVID, I was um, hesitant to have all those people in one room. So, but a lot of people went, and but because of the baby and my anxiety, I decided to not go this year. But I am planning on going next year. And next year it's gonna be in May. So I have to buy my ticket yet, but um, anyway, that's where I purchased this. Um, so, and I don't even know where I got it. There's no name on this. This is how, you know, you pick, it was hanging and I picked up a couple of colors. So I don't know the um, manufacturer or anything like this. So maybe when I go to Needleworkers, I can bring this with me and I, I can ask if, if they know. They just had their uh, Needle Fest in August and Stacy from 911 Stitcher, uh, she attended and it was so nice to hear the recap that she gave of it because I've, I've never had anybody uh, do that before that I saw uh, recapped, recapped that needle fest. So it was really nice um, to hear it. She showed some pictures. Um, so I was, I was happy to catch it that way. So that's how I know how much I uh, miss not going. So anyway, that's my pillow. It'll be like this until I can get some green um, of that. Alrighty, those are all my, oh no, one more. I had stitched and I gave the pattern away. This was, Carriage House Samplings, The Gilded Cage. Sheet metal, that's what the back of that, of, of this is, sheet metal. And we bought, my husband bought me a sheet of it and I cut little snippets of it when I use it. So I found this cage at um, Hobby Lobby. Uh, I went earlier in the week with my friend Alva and I wasn't sure it was gonna fit in because I had already finished this piece. And, um, but it fit in the door and I think this is a cute finish. And it was 50% it was off, I believe. So it came out to like 749, I believe, somewhere around there. And that's it. I was thinking of getting a bird of some sort and maybe adding it either to the top or something. But I have one in the cage. So that's my finish. Okay, so now that is all my finishes. Now on to whips. Okay, this I haven't picked up in a while. And this is Cottage Garden Samplings Love. It's actually called Forever and Ever. And as I was working on it, I was getting excited that I hadn't picked it up in a while and I was making some nice project and it was coming out really well. So what I did was I put in a lifeline. That's what we call it in, in knitting, a lifeline. When you run a thread through some of your stitches so that if you make a mistake further up, you, could, you have that lifeline that you only have to pull out to that line. But um, I did it from the top of this cardinal straight across so that when I worked worked my way up uh, it would match so what I stitched this time is the heart this uh, rose bud one of the leaves here oops and then this way the leaf at the bottom and the outline and face of the second cardinal so I love how this looks Forever and ever. I believe this is, I'm going to shoot for a finish next year on this one. So what I have left to do is the cardinal, then bring up the vine, the leaves, the house, and love. The bag fell on the floor, so I'm just going to set it here. 
Okay, then I picked up for a sampler September. Oh, that's Mary, Mary Clayton from Hands Across the Sea. And I didn't get too much done on this. But just the same, I made progress. I finished the top border and the two birds. I'm doubling the fabric so that um, it shows better. So the top border, I went straight across to the other edge and then, and then, and then stitch the two birds above the house. So I think the next time I pick it up, I want to work the border down and do the other angel. That's the plan on this one. And I had, I think I shared it with you. I had originally wanted to do it on an Ada and do it on a smaller count because I can't do anything smaller than 28. So, um, but there's some one, two over one stitching. It's, it's different in certain sections that you had to do it, not that you had to do it on a 28, you would have had to poke the fabric otherwise. Oh, I'm trying to say, what is this? I decided instead of Oh Joyous Day that I started this last month. And this is Spell of the Moon by Blackbird Designs. And it's in the Winds of Autumn book. And I picked it up and oh, finished it. So because it's an odd size, it was hard to find a frame. I went over to Hobby Lobby and I was looking and looking and there's really nothing. So I'm, I don't know if I'm going to do a flat fold or a pillow. Any suggestions, please leave them. I don't know if it was like seven by eight or six by seven that I was looking for. I mean, I, I have the measurement somewhere, but sometimes because I can't stitch on smaller fabrics when I do it like 28 count, it, they, the projects come out larger, so it's hard to find frames. A lot of people like, can figure it out like, oh, well, if I do it on a 36, it'll fit into this size frame. I'm not there yet. Then I, I started um, this one. This is Swan Lake by Blackbird Designs in the Anniversaries of the Heart series. And I'm stitching this on, I don't think I told you the fabrics, did I? I'm sorry. This is a 28 count Almond Lugana. I just wanted to do something different. The colors are the call for. Um, so that the outlining of the house is dolphin or the a DMC conversion of it. I'm looking on the wrong page. I did, uh, 932. But everything else is the call for. And um, there's an A at the top that is satin stitched. And I'm, I'm thinking that was Barb Adams' um, initial. But there's no alphabet in here that is satin stitch that you can swap that out. So I think I'm just going to stitch an S at the top. This is the July block. So I'm going to stitch an S here and then where it has um, the, let's see, the year is, no, the year is down here. I'm going to put Rebecca Michael's year that they got married and then the date of 722 on the side because our last, oh, it's on this side, they have a last name here, and uh, I don't think ours would fit there. Maybe it would, but it's too much, it's too long. So the date that's here, I'm just going to bring it here, 722, the year will be here, and an S will be in here. So, um, so this would be the fourth block that I will have stitched on. Forever and Ever was stitched on a 28 count Ice Blue Lugana. Um, hands Across the Sea, Mary Clayton. 
is stitched on a 28 count ivory Lugana. I know sometimes I forget to tell you what I um, what fabrics I, I stitch on. Okay, I didn't show that one yet. I didn't show that. Okay. Okay, I picked up the bookshelf by Little House Needleworks, and thank you, Dee, for the loan of this pattern. And this is stitched on a 28 count Golden Harvest Lugana. And I stitched the top vase, the little red flower, I don't know if they're flowers, but little dots around, and the second set of books. Then I stitched everything under the bookshelf. The bookshelf was done in the first sitting, and then I stitched all the author's last names, the two books, and that border, leaf border. So I'm happy with the progress that I made. And then I have um, the names of the books down here to stitch, and then another border. I don't know if I'll finish this year. But I enjoy stitching on it. I love the fabric. It's a silk weaver fabric. Um, and it's really nice to stitch on. Then I picked up for the season, Autumn in the Village. And I have everything stitched and outlined from this to this. Um, let's see, that's the bakery the bakery. So I have the grocery store and this to stitch. So I stitched some of the grocery store, but it was a lot of changing of colors and I wanted more block colors. And I think it was during a Zoom call, so I didn't want to constantly change and change and change. So the next time I stitch on this, I'll stitch on it when I don't have uh, a Zoom going on and I can concentrate. So I stitched in this section. This is on a 25 count cameo by, um, I got it at Needleworkers, but I, it's a Lugana. So this is the grocery store. So what I stitched on was a little bit over in this section here and this top, and then I said, well, let's go over here. So then I stitched this house here. So real, I do have to go back and um, fill that all in. Like I said, this is the whole piece. Is it there? It's there. I know sometimes people say, can you hold it closer? So I'm holding it closer. I don't know if it's always in frame. Um, but I hope that was okay. And the last one that I stitched this month was my long dog, Templar Prophecy. I love this. I always tell you that. I love this, love this. This is the whole pattern. And I'm down at the bottom. The goal this year was 12 pages, no, six pages. <laughs> so that would have been um, 11 and 12 here. For the year and then then i had three pages left to complete um, in 2022 since um here's the date that it was originally put out but i stitched in 2022 and um this is 327 stitches by 341 and it's stitched on a 28 count white lugana and I finished page 12. Yay! So, this is the block down here at the bottom. I'll hold it from the top. I guess I should stand up. I 
I guess I can't get it in frame unless I go back here. So I'm really excited um, that I'm making progress ahead of time. I will be stitching on this in October, November, and December. And hopefully I can get one more page done in those three months. And then I just have two pages to complete in 2022. Alrighty, um, that's all my uh, whips. Now I'm going, I'm gonna, first of before I, I have some little stitch thing that I want to show you. But before that, I just want to talk about uh, two stitchers. I did talk about Stacy, the 911 stitcher, and her floss tube is nine spelled out. N-I-N-E, O-N-E, N-I-N-E, no, 911, no. N-I-N-E, one, one, O-N-E, O-N-E, stitcher, uh, Stacy, And um, I enjoy watching her videos, but I, I, I mentioned that she did a recap of uh, Needleworks Needle Fest. So that was fun to watch. And I also watched Samantha, who's in Canada. And she goes by, now I'm, I'm probably going to butcher this, the Hagee, Hoagie, Hagee, Stitcher. It's H-Y-G-G-E, Hagee, Ho Hoagie. Anyway, she does an amazing stitcher. She only has a couple of videos out and she just got high. She just got a part-time job at a quilting store. How bet, how much more can you ask for? I mean, that's awesome. So anyway, she does beautiful stitching. She's done a lot of mirabilias, and um, there was one that I really liked, but it, it's out of print. It's, um, what's it called? Violet, I believe. But I found something similar on, um, on I don't know if it was Nora Corbett or Mirabilia. It's called Elizabeth that had a lot of purple as well, and I thought it was so pretty. So I might be picking up Elizabeth. But she did a violet, and she shows it, I think, in her latest video. I will put the spelling of um, both in my notes of the 911 Stitcher and Samantha's channel. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to... This would fall under sewing, but it's not really quilting. Um, but I thought it might be something that, if you can stitch a straight line, you might like to stitch this. And, and this is what gave me the idea this little bag and on it it says sugar from Australia so probably either when we went there or when a relative came here there was some kind of sugar in here and I thought what a great idea and what I did at my last retreat that I attended to which was 2019 yes 2019 the New Jersey it's called the New Jersey floss tube retreat but it's not just for floss tubers it's for anybody um, I made one of these bags and we had a gift us like a secret secret exchange like you put a bag on the table and then you put numbers and then when they pick your number you go up and pick a bag and that's your bag it was no stealing so I saw this and it made me think of how to put something, I put it in another like paper gift bag, but the project that I made, I fit into a bag like this and it was larger than this. Um, but I wanted to show you how simple it is. This was a 12 inch square of fabric. And what I did was I folded down the top a quarter of an inch and a quarter of an inch. And then I just top stitched it all the way around. And that's like you can see because I try to match the color but the beige I just top stitched it all the way around then I folded it in half because now this was laying flat and you do that I ironed you know I ironed it down a quarter of an inch and a quarter of an inch and then I top stitched it then I took I folded it in half and I just stitched straight down oh but what I did was I put a piece of ribbon in here I folded the ribbon and the folded section was in this section. I'll show you when I flip it. And then I stitched down, stitched across. And now I'm going to turn it. OK, 
can. I'm going to just put the corners in for now, like as so. And here's my ribbon that I attached, and this flips up. And you can put you put something in here. Just put put something in here, just so you can see. And you really can't see. I put something in there, and then I would gather the top up. Now, depending on how long you make your bow, your ribbon, you can tie a bow, or you can just tie a double knot loosely so that the person can open it. And, and it's in here like that. And it's a reusable bag. <clears throat> so the person you gift it to can share it with somebody. <clears throat> now, if you want the bag to stand up, you would, um, when it's still in the wrong side out section, you would, not mitering, I don't think it's called mitering, but I forget what it's called. This is one of those um, days where nothing goes comes quickly and <clears throat> if you want a flat bottom you would fold this here's the seam and you fold it like in a triangle and you would get a ruler and measure like let's say one inch from here you would open the seam open the seam measure let's say you want an inch down draw a line and do the same thing to the other side. This is boxing the corners, that's what it's called. It's boxing the corners. But you wanna make sure that they're somewhat even, so you make sure that your center seam goes down the center with the ruler, one inch and across. Now that, that'll give you a pretty wide bottom to sit open. So it would sit so that it's flat like this. And you have the option of, um, I pinked all my sheer, uh, my seams so that they don't fray. You can cut the, that off, or you can leave it in there for more stability. And then, and then the piece would um, stand up or be wider at the bottom. Now, of course, a larger piece of fabric is going to make, make a larger bag. So, um, but I just thought I'd share it with you because it's something that's reusable. Um, like if you do a theme of some sort, you can get fabric for the theme. Um, if it's a birthday, you can get, you know, happy birthday. You can get balloons, probably fabric. So anyway, this I would do, use for Christmas and um, put a little small in there, anything, and then tie it and like the ribbon. Okay, this size here got was from a 12 by 12 inch piece of fabric. Um, if it, you need it to be the height is okay, but if you need it to be wider, you just add 12 by 20, and it'll be a wider piece. And then, let's see, the ribbon is about a 12 inch ribbon, folded in half into the seam, and the two pieces are on the inside when you sew it, and then you just tie it that way. Now, if you wanna make a bow instead of a knot, then you'd have to make your ribbon a little bit longer so that you have room to, uh, I hope that was helpful and I didn't bore you to death. And this was another one that, I don't know where I got this. I know I didn't make it because I wouldn't have put this type of closure on it. So this was somehow gifted to us. And um, this could be even for a wine. Um, you wanna give somebody a wine bottle, you're going over for dinner and, um, or if you want to give somebody some kind of um, fancy oil or a vinegar, um, you know, and you want to put it in something different than a regular bag, you can just make a fabric bag and it only takes like maybe 15 minutes. I think it's harder to cut the fabric out than sew it. <laughs> anyway, if you have any questions, just leave them below. I'll do my best in answering them. Until next time, plans for next month are stitching some of Christmas ornaments that I didn't get to during um, my last Stitch Mania, which was basically um, a lot of Christmas ornaments. And um, so I'll share 
some of those with you. Hopefully a lot of them will be finished. Hopefully I won't be carrying anything over to the next month because I would like to finish them, fully finish them because some of them are gifts. Alrighty, so until next time, and then I'll, use, I'll do my usual whips. No, no new starts other than the Christmas ornaments. And then November will have some new, new starts that um, I spoke about in my plans for next year. But I am thinking about plans for next year, last year I meant. Words. <laughs> so I, I have been thinking about my plans for next year. At first I was thinking no new starts for three months and just making progress on the ones that I want to get done in 2022, but I don't know if I can do that. So until next time, friends, have a great weekend. Happy October stitching. And I'll talk to you in about two weeks. Take care. Bye. Love you guys.